doing great. Thanks for having me. Glad to be on. Yeah, so um, I started playing League of Legends in Season 2. Um, didn't play ranked until Season 3. Was like a criminal 3v3 player because I was too nervous to go into 5v5. As soon as I got into like ranked in Season 3, shot up to Platinum, and then was Diamond ever since for like the past like eight seasons. I haven't played in the most recent ones. And just started transitioning to other MOBAs during the time, whether it be Dawngate, Infinite Crisis, um, even played a little bit of Gigantic, Strife, like, it's basically like, a, I played most isometric MOBAs and most MOBAs that you can imagine. Anything that has a MOBA tag, I probably tried it or at least heard about it. And I got really involved with Paragon with a group of friends. And basically, I started playing just because, like, uh, the PEX LAN actually happened. And we were like, oh, man, let's form a team. Let's just go try it. So we went out and played and uh, we didn't actually end up playing during the qualifiers because people weren't there. But then I just started loving the game and then was playing competitive and then the game died and then got pulled into the para zombie scene and somehow found myself here working at omeda right it's kind of just a crazy story where like if you told me two years ago i'd be working at omeda like i probably wouldn't have believed you but here we are and it's all fun so uh, apparently like a little bit of technical issue on my side i hope that no people can hear me uh, i think it should be fixed uh, if people can like kind of confirm yeah perfect thank you uh julie um, and so on that regard, like you said, like now you're, you're working on Omeda. Can you precise what is your role in, uh, inside Omeda? So like uh, also like. Yeah, so uh, I'm just a game designer over at Omeda. That's my official title. In regards to what I own or what I do is in reality, like I spin a lot of plates. Most of us in game design do. We all have our hands in the pie in some uh, capacity. I would say like most of the time I'm focused on just features and uh, planning. I still dip my hand in balance and a bunch of other player facing stuff that you guys all care about, whether it be heroes, balance, et cetera. I, all have, I have my part to play in it, but I don't own these things in particular. For instance, like I'm not the person who drives balance, but I have my place in balance is really like the best way to describe it. So I would say like, I have my hands on a lot of different things. I could probably answer a lot of different questions, but I don't, I, I can't really say what I own as of right now is probably the best way I can say it. Uh, so from what I understand, like there is like different ownership, but since it's like like not a super like humongous team, like of course like everyone is kind of have like their own input and kind of help based on like I assume like the availability that you all have. So in that regard, like the goal of tonight is like to discuss like mainly around balance. Of course, like if people have question in the chat, that's also like the opportunity to maybe like share with people and see uh, how it's it's going. And like the first part is like I would like maybe if try to kind of define what is like the, the balance philosophy. Like maybe you have like some golden rules or some goal that you're trying to reach as, as a team on Omeda. Like maybe like you have like some precept because I know that balance is something that have so many variables that if you don't have like directions, it's very, very hard to choose which variable are the correct one to tune and in which direction uh, you can maybe like assess like some issue, like what you consider an issue for instance. So maybe you can like, Speak a little bit about that, like what type of like, yeah, maybe golden rule. I don't know if you have those, but at least like, I assume like some direction that you would like to reach. Yeah, I mean, usually it's just about acknowledging a problem and then finding a solution. That's kind of just the basis of uh, any gameplay oriented thing or even balance itself. It's like we acknowledge that, for instance, in this most recent patch, that it's like TTK isn't where we want it to be, where it's like we want fights to be more extended and people are dying too fast. So how do you do that, right? It's like realistically it is stats and growth these are the solutions but then it's like when you adjust stats and growth what does it do to itemization what does it do to other things there's a lot of different moving parts that require a lot of time in order to validate for instance like if people in general just have 10 more armor like what does that do to the value percentage pen as opposed to flat pen these are questions you have to ask yourself and to be real there really aren't many like golden rules it's really a lot of like when you add something you always have to take something away and these are always like the, like numbers. We, we have this saying that's kind of like a joke between us as, as designers, uh, plus five, minus five, right? And you see it a lot, and it's a comment that the community quite uh, gives us quite a lot in regards to like, oh, hey, you don't push far, uh, far enough. Like, give Sev five more base damage on Q. But it's like the ramifications of understanding, like, what happens to his lane whenever you add five more base damage to his Q is something that's almost, like, unseen, but it's very much, like, a very, very powerful tool 
if you look at it on average, uh, higher win rate champions in a game like League of Legends, for instance, generally just have higher base stats. Is kind of like the better way to describe it. They they generally just outstat you. You know, when something's more durable, it can make more mistakes. There's so in regards to like pinpointing a specific golden rule, like we don't really have. We do have some in, in regards where it's like uh, we value. We try to value consistency as much as we can. Um, things like this in regards to consistent interactions and items that are homogenous should interact in a similar way amongst classes if there are some. Um, just general things like this, like we do want to be consistent and have the game be as understandable as it can be. But other than that, it's all free reign. It's basically just, we only really do balance around creating like healthier gameplay, more positive gameplay, which is generally just always the flatline goal. Just create better gameplay, more interaction, better gameplay, more fun. Okay. And when it comes like to this part of like getting like better gameplay, as you said, uh, I think it can like kind of vary quite a lot, like between like what is better gameplay, like maybe at low level and what is better gameplay at high level. Like for instance, I know it's a very, very hard, like one topic is like, can be like, do you consider like, for instance, like when we have to balance abilities, like, is it considered like that the ability is always like hitting the target because like the player are like super proficient mechanically and they never missed or like sometimes like we have to take into account that miss are probable because it's a third person MOBA. Like I, in, in this regard, like we do have to make a choice sometimes and do we have like more direction and we still like a feeling from what we're seeing in the game overall? Uh, generally, it's, um, I mean, our, our player base is quite new to the game. The game is quite new. Therefore, it's like you're going to have very disparaging levels of skill, especially considering the context of Paragon and the fact that it's like the game has effectively been out for so many years and there's other remakes that have been out and things like this. So there's players who are very, very skilled and there are players who are very, very new and very, very not skilled, right? So there is like quite a bit of a disparity and probably like the best example that I can bring up is actually in particular one, per one champion that's uh, been a bit of a topic or like not really internally but it's like it's something that i see feedback on a lot is actually just severog right where yeah. he's actually one of our lower winningest heroes and our lower playing played heroes right which is the funny oh. thing but you look at competitive and he's actually like one of the most dominant heroes like at least over time right so it's really is like that, that that's a clear enough disparity to say that like the average player isn't actually playing severog like super proficiently but it's still, does that still mean they still need to be nerfed? It's like, yes, it does, right? Because of like what happens on the top end. So there's always give and take where like there are things where it's like, sometimes you just have to accept that some heroes are harder and that at certain brackets of skill, like some characters just won't perform well. And you, you accept that caveat and you move on, right? Okay. Where it's kind of like, we acknowledge that it's like maybe Severog stacking is just too hard and we could tackle that issue in a different way, but it's like competitive still matters. It really is about spinning plates and understanding like what is the greater goal in this sense, right? For instance, like Severog, uh, should Severog be one of our lower, lowest uh, play rate heroes for a certain a lot amount of time? Is it a problem that he never moves, even though he is quite strong? And is it because he's too hard to execute, or because his power fantasy isn't fun? It's all about finding the problem, right, and then actually acting on the solution. In that sense, definitely. And and in that regard, it kind of make me like think about something. Is sometimes it's kind of hard like I, I assume as a game designer because like you, you said like here like Severog probably can be strong but like the game base is like player base is kind of new to the game so like sometimes it can make that like you you know that a hero is strong but it's just that people need time to learn that hero to actually like know how to play it correctly and do you think like in those situations like how much do you believe of like the community just like growing to get, like growing as 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 players and that you don't need to actually like impact to change the thing because like the player will be become better and that kind of translates also a little bit into the idea of like how do you think like how much like the dev should impact the change of the meta like for instance like maybe like the meta is going to change just because player will start to learn to play better against certain composition and so you don't need to nerf thing it's just people that need to learn so maybe something about that yeah so um Commonly, like since metagaming is so recent, like in the past like decade of gaming, right? It's like trickle down effect is like very, very real. For instance, you have people's like people like yourself or other influencers, content creators that will acquire information and then and then share it, right? For instance, I remember in the early days whenever Survivor was uh, running in his Kalari level one and smite stealing people's stuff, and then it's like people start warding as a reaction to it, and then like the metagame evolves and all this stuff. Now it's like in regards to when we intervene, it's like we truly just we only intervene whenever it like it, it's it's either like a toxic play pattern or it's like it's not within our goals as in like it's not what the hero was designed to be right if you wanted to get a league example it's kind of like 
whenever Echo was building full tank in like season six, season seven, if you're familiar with League, when he's building like two tank items and one shotting carries, right? It's like it wasn't the character's an assassin building full tank. He shouldn't be dealing assassin level damage, right? It's like it's things like this. These are the only times that we truly need to intervene. It's really just the, the, there's like a clear example to actually answer one of your other questions in regards to um, how, how do we. Um, I'm going to paraphrase, but uh, well, actually, it doesn't matter. Point is, um, in particular, like we noticed this a lot with like Feng Mao, or at least I did, where it's like we, we always come come to the the round table of balance, which it really isn't the round table. It's like two or three people, and we 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 talk about Feng Mao, and we're like, so do we need to buff it? And every single time, I was like, no, we don't, because I know exactly what's going to happen when you do buff it, right? And the thing is, everybody for the longest amount of time is saying that Feng Mao is bad, and for the longest amount of time, I'm like, Feng Mao is just really hard to play. Right, and it's like he really is hard to play, especially into a lot of CC with our cleanse being what it is and other things. And it's also the fact that he can't really space; like he has no ranged ability. There's a bunch of different caveats that really go into why Fang Mao was to the strength that he was, but it's very easy to see that it's like <clears throat> obviously, like time to kill gets changed or carry damage gets lowered, and all of a sudden he's a super strong champion. It's like who would have known, right? Yeah. Like there are things. There are just things at times where it's like, while even though the community is blaring at you saying like, "Think about super weak," like please buff it and all this stuff, it's like you. Um, and sometimes you trust your gut and just you know what's right, right? And th those are one of those situations, right? And there's multiple times where it's like it's not as if we actively ignore things, but it's mostly just like it either isn't within our goal or we simply just don't align on like the fact that the character is weak, whether at the high end or the low end. And, and also, like, sometimes I think uh, it could be fine to have, like, some characters that require, like, very, very, like, very strong execution and that are not considered strong because then, like, sometimes, like, some players start to really, like, master this own character and they kind of feel, like, great because, like, they are the one making Feng Mao working uh, while it's not, like, considered kind of, like, a weak pick in the, in, in a sense, in the meta. So that's, like, a, kind of, like, another question, like... Is it kind of, like, I think you, you already kind of answer in that, but it's how, like, I assume in a sense that it's kind of okay to have like different, like power level in a sense, uh, and it kind of shifting around because uh, you kind of feel it's not like needed to have everything at the exact same line because it's a MOBA, it can't happen uh, in the end. And also like, because like, like you said here, like Feng Mao, you're convinced that he's super strong. It's just like people need to, to learn to play him and uh, in the future like probably like people will be able to answer and there is like a lot of moving parts and so like sometimes it's it's okay to have a character that stay like on, on the sideline until like uh, he shine for a better day i guess yeah i would say in general right it's like uh, a perfectly balanced moba is just not fun and you know it's it, it is partly an opinion but it's at least an opinion that's commonly shared amongst design and amongst balance is that a, a perfectly balanced moba is just not fun and so it's like there should be times where a certain character is strong and it's their time. You could think of it as like a seasonal, right? Where it's like you're bringing characters in and out of the rotation, but in a different way, right? Which that's yeah. not the philosophy that we hold. I don't want anybody to hold me to that, but that's just like a general way to think about it in that sense where like it is fine if some champions are weak, their time will come. And it's just that simple. And and that's like you, you, know, you said something that is very, um, that I think I kind of, a read behind this answer is like balance is not an end in itself like balance is just as the service for the game to be like enjoyable to play in a sense uh f from from what you say like i feel like it's kind of like what you're trying to do because like people like always like i feel like i like just want i want balance i want the game to be fully balanced but if you want something fully balanced or just have one character everyone play the same character and then like that's balance in the end because like a symmetrical map but it's not fun to play so i, I fully like uh I agree with uh, here and uh, and uh, and also like this rotation of stuff that people are trying to um, to get onto that. I have like one question, like it's maybe like here in terms of like the balance philosophy right now. Is it like really like about like mainly um, focusing about like getting like whole the system right? Like for instance, like we've seen like a big change on the TTK, uh, which is like I assume like you're taking the chance of this early access to kind of like fine-tune like those general concept of like for instance caster how how is the place of caster in the meta how is the place of carry and all of these things interact and like hero you're still focused on that but first you kind of try to get like this big part right in the first place is it something that uh, uh i'm reading correctly or not at all yeah i would just say like uh the game was in a pretty good spot i would say like probably about 
early access and also the last closed test that we did before early access. <clears throat> the issue is things change, heroes come in, new items are added, new features come in. And obviously the game has to change with it. <clears throat> so really it's about reestablishing and finding the baseline again that we can then slowly iterate off of because we all acknowledge within design that we were quite far from like that healthy baseline that we were quite used to in internally testing and the earlier part of early access, right? And we could definitely just see the strain that some of the things that we added in like had in so uh or applied so yeah it really is just re-establishing the baseline and then slowly going from there i would just say like don't expect like patches of this size uh for a little bit because more now it's kind of like we're just going to fine tune let the dust settle and then we can come back and do it again it's like this is at least like how we'd be balanced in the sense was that we really we really missed the mark like with these we didn't really change things in accordance with the other things that were coming in which is the issue of balance right again do you add something you put something in you take something away it's it's always the nature of it um so i had like something in my mind it just popped out like it disappeared so i guess it will come back uh very soon yeah no it, it just come back because like I, I was talking here so the idea is also like i feel like like wh when you go for those balance patch you also kind of limit like still like the new patch that is arrived, like there is a lot of change, but it's focused about like one thing. And so I feel like you kind of limit the amount of change that you're doing. Is it because like you think it's easier to actually like see the impact of the change that you're making or it's for like another reason that you don't want to change like too much stuff. Maybe it's also like to not lose players with too many change at once. I don't know, but maybe like some insight on that. Uh, generally, when it comes down to isolating things, it's mostly just you want to validate everything that you did. Like you said, that you want to actually see the change and have like a frame of reference to understand what the change did or if it was positive. It's all about uh, actually validating what you've done, right? Because at the end of the day, like we can have our proof of concepts or whatever, what the patch should be or how we reach these goals, uh, whether it be TTK or anything else. But it really is also saying like, hey, you know, I can measure this, like this is, um, that this was the correct change, right? And then we can take that lesson and move forward, or this wasn't the correct change, then we take that lesson and we move forward, right? So it's entirely just validating things. And it's also just um, really just making changes like TTK, like they do have to be done independently. Like, like a lot of these broader scro scope changes that require like the whole patch, they have to be done independently. And it's hard to like, let's say like adjust the hero's damage, like in the same uh, frame, as you're raising stats, right? Because then it's like you're also coinciding or like you're you're squashing the change that you're doing already, right? If I raise yeah. somebody's HP and raise their damage subsequently, it's like it actually, it just net neutral, so it doesn't do anything. Yeah. So it's like, that's why it's like you do have to isolate where it's like you can go like, oh, well, Kalari's kind of weak on this patch, but, you know, we make her more durable and we make everybody else more durable, but it doesn't make her damage go up. But it's like, yeah, but it's, that's not the point of the patch, right? So like it's partly to validate it's also just like there is like a time and a place and it's like if you move too many things at once it could be really far to really understand what you did and so like here uh i guess like that's a good uh, moment to kind of transition about like like the process behind how, like all this balancing like you said like you kind of extract like some issue and you'll be able to actually like validate if the change you actually made actually like kind of worked on or not and so i guess that like you have a lot of um feedback probably like data like uh, analysis stuff that is going to be able to actually like answer those questions because like uh, you can't just like say like oh i'm looking one game and i kind of feel that like it's too too complex on the mobile so kind of wh what kind of is the process to be able to collect like this information uh, uh, on the side of Omeda? so we've actually recently been more like incorporating data into our workflow um we actually have like quite a few data driven people around us or data analysts that help us in particular um on the design side and in particular, it's been really uh, helpful at just like delivering stats to us, for instance, like, you know, what, what are the heroes that people gravitate towards uh, normally? What are the heroes that people really enjoy to play? And like, how do we measure enjoyment, right? How do we measure like somebody who's going to convert and stay as a player in predecessor and things like this? So at the end of the day, we're, we're slowly incorporating it. We could do it more, but it's like for the most part, it really is looking at it really is looking at the game like holistically, whether it be from like, it really is looking at the game holistically, like from the goal that we're trying to approach it from, right? So while it's like, I would say like a lot of the balance that we've done on this TTK patch in particular, like it has been data-driven in, in some capacity and especially when it comes down to measuring results, like we're very data-driven, but in regards to actually assessing how much, like if the armor growth should be uh, 0.5 or 0.6 higher, like when we, whenever we raise it, it's like these aren't these things aren't data driven, 
or that they are data driven, but not necessarily from a data analyst. It's mostly just like we math it out, we look at it, we understand what 132 armor equals X amount of X amount of mitigation late game. Is that fine? Is that not? It's really just a lot of it is eye test and then just doing like simulations in that sense from our side. Okay. Uh, and like, how, how do you get like into like, um, like extracting the information that something is a problem? Because as you said, like, you know, starting like to get like the data, I think like the data can like uh, provide like some good information, like about like win rate stuff, but it doesn't give you like the picture of like, it can maybe like give you like an information that there is a problem somewhere. Like maybe like, like you said, like Sevrog is not having like a good win rate. Uh, how, how, like, how do you like first extract this information, for instance, that Sevrog doesn't have a good win rate. And when you have this information, what is kind of the process to transform like this? Okay. We have an issue here and what is exactly the issue? And then I guess like when we know exactly what is the issue, like how do we correct that issue? Yeah, yeah. Again, like I touched on with Sevrog in particular is kind of like, it's always just uh, diagnosing the problem or acknowledging the problem and then finding the solution, right? So it's like there, there's several different answers you can come up with Sevrog in particular. Like you see that, let's just say, I don't remember what the number is exactly, so don't quote me on this. Yeah. Or, or feel free to make a meme out of it. It would be great. <laughs> um, so let, let's just say he has a 44% win rate, right? Um, realistically, and that's across all MMR ranges, right? We'll just yeah. say that. It's like, then we can start looking at like, is a 44% win rate okay for this character? And there's a bunch of different answers that you could put as design or say it's okay. He's a late game character. Late game characters will always be worse in like a, uh, a non-constructed environment, right? It's static across all MOBAs in this sense. Late game characters will always be worse. Um, let's just say he doesn't have a strong lane. Lane matters a lot, right? It's like th there's different answers that you could bring, but it's also like, does the newer player like gravitate towards this champion, right? Is it one of your more played champions, right? But so if it's like, if it's played, if it's played little, and it loses a lot, that, that tells me it's not a fun experience, right? Or people aren't no. gravitating towards the experience, which then means, okay, so we've acknowledged that it's like, it's a late game hero, but it isn't the fun experience because people don't play it and people don't win with it. So what is actually the problem? And then it starts diagnosing where it's like, you're not going to look at like Sephiroth's damage per minute, for instance, and then extrapolate, oh, he's not doing enough damage. It's mostly about on the design side and on the character side is like, is, is Sev's kid, a kid okay? Is his fantasy okay? Is the idea of stacking fun? Is there something we could do? Is his Q cooldown too high? Right? It's like, there's a bunch of different angles that you can come from it. And there's a lot of different ways that data can inform you, but it's about reading into the data and understanding the problem that you're trying to solve is really the, the greater point. And so I guess like to be able to like read into the data, I, I assume that um, you like, of course, like you're, play, you're working on the game, but you need like a very good understanding of the game of like all the, the process. And do you also like, maybe like sometimes like it can happen that you see a data and you're not like fully sure about like exactly what is the problem. Are, are, are like Omega's team like looking into like some feedbacks of like some players to try to listen under, to understand like a little bit better uh, what is actually like not working or so far, like since we're in the early access change, the player base is quite small. Uh, the, knowledge, the knowledge is like uh, enough on the side of uh, like the, the, the design team on the side of Omeda. Uh, we always look for feedback. It's really just about what we're indexing on in particular, right? And that, that's the thing is that we always ground ourselves on what exactly what it is, right? So or what exactly is like the goal and what exactly is the problem that we're trying to solve. So it's like, while people, while people have been more than willing to share and especially like we have an internal testing team uh, made of players and that's usually where we get a lot of our feedback from in that sense. I know there's other, I know there's plenty of my colleagues that also look through our, um, our threads or the, the forums on discord as well. Uh, we see plenty of those inside the company. So I hope people know that they do get listened to, even if they don't get responded to, but, um, so I would say more or less, it's like, we, we do ground ourselves in our own assumptions, but it it always is player driven. It is player driven by what we see and what we and what we uh, hear, in that sense. So it's like, or also like from what we play, right? Like for instance, like you can play something and you can just know it's like, yeah, this isn't really right in this sense, right? And it's only in the egregious outliers so you can ever see that. Okay, um, like. If you were like, uh, like we, we talked a little bit about feedback. So you said like you talk about their internal testing. Uh, 
if you have the chance here like to because we have the player in the chat like if you were like preferring like a certain form of feedback like what what is that you think like would be like the most useful like because i, I feel like like sometimes like they are kind of great at like finding what is not like really working for them but sometimes they just like propose solution when they don't have like the whole background and what is like the final agenda which can be like sometimes like not really useful so what would be like for you like the best way to provide feedback so it's like the more efficient uh for for the team of, of omeda in that sense i mean just say something isn't fun like no I'm, I'm being entirely serious as well it's like um it's so much more useful in order to just say like hey you know it's like um you can provide context or clips go like hey i'm this kind of player like you could label yourself as like i'm a com i'm a competitive player i care a lot about winning or whatever i'm a whatever and i just don't enjoy kalari and that is more useful than anything is is the thing where it's like specifically whenever people go like rampage should be nerfed just nerf his his old hp regen from four times to three times right or something like this it's like yeah but you don't understand the context of what happens whenever you do that like yeah. you don't and the funny thing is is because we've been in a closed environment for as long as we have right for like multiple years it's like i can confidently tell you that everybody on the design team knows exactly what happens whenever you make it from three to four times because we've seen it ourselves I know exactly what happens when you give Fang Mao 10 more base damage on his hamstring or his blade dance, well, whatever it's called now. I can confidently tell you I know exactly what happens. And it's like there are certain things that it's like the community hasn't seen, but we have seen, right? Whether it be through, because we've been in the closed environment so long, which is where some of this disconnect comes from. And I feel like where people feel like they don't get heard is mostly because, again, like we just have seen a lot of this stuff. And thankfully, some of, some of the stuff you haven't had to see, like Jungle, like jungle Murdoch. That was fun. <laughs> so like, if I can start like two things like from your answer. So like the first thing like I kind of heard is about like, if you want to provide feedback, it's inter it could be interesting like for the, for the devs to actually like understand where it's coming from and kind of provide a little bit of context of the type of player you are. So it's it actually like easier. Like if you're just a casual player that just want to enjoy like a fun experience, it's completely different on what like a competitive player, like you said, is very interested on. And like more like about like sharing like feelings of something that doesn't feel right. Uh, I think is apparently like um, more useful. And the second aspect is like, it's really like for myself, like I didn't know, like I just started to follow predecessor when there was like the first like stress test. Uh, and before that, like I wasn't really like involved at all with the project. So like, I kind of understand like better because like, uh, this like little change like you said like maybe like you just improved 10 damage but like you, you said like it wasn't like really data driven but now like i understand better because of the context that you said like you spent like almost like multiple years of working on that and so you have such a an in and out understanding of like how everything uh, can interact together that you can actually like make those uh, informed decision uh in that regard and uh sometimes like uh it's true, like as as player, we don't really see like all this work that has been done in the background, and uh, and like you said, also we don't know the agenda, which can be sometimes um, like it's it's very very hard about balance. It's like when you do one little change, that can have like so many like ramification and change and like snowball out of control. Like five five damage somewhere can be like actual like a big snowball on the game as a MOBA, so it's uh, it's very important to be uh, to be careful. So I think that kind of answer also like one of the other question I have is was like kind of what, what is the process when you want to implement a change uh, in the sense that do we go like, okay, we kind of find like what is like the patch that we want to go. We're going to implement the change. Do we got like have like fast testing period, maybe with the internal testing people or uh, is it just like um, we're pretty confident on how it's going to go live because we have all this background knowledge that you, you communicate, like how you approach about that, like implementing those change until they actually like access the live server. Yeah, so for us in particular, it's like we do have very clear protocols. Um, there really isn't much uh, wiggle room in that sense where it always starts on paper. It always starts on paper. We always map things out in the same way that we do just in Google Docs, right? Where we map out exactly, let's say like, like the general footnotes and it, they could be scribbles, they can be chicken scratches. It doesn't matter what it is in just regards of like, TT, we we think TTK is a problem, we should increase it, right? And then we just start actioning going like, how do we do that, right? It's base stats, it's it's growth, it's this. If you want to hit it in this point, it's this. If you want to hit it in this point, it's that. And then it's like, you, you map it out in that sense. And then you just start actually working through it on paper and going like, okay, so let's go through all, uh, all 26 heroes, et cetera, right? And then just 
start looking at them individually and extrapolating and then just understanding the context of like where the character is in the current game and then being able to raise that up right and also just again running through simulations running through a couple of things and going like is this value okay is it good within the context of the game then we see it and then we also have to validate it through internal internal testing finally right where it's like that that's where we usually get a lot of our player driven feedback right where it's like this just doesn't feel right like this isn't okay this is too broken this is whatever because at the end of the day, so we also need time to just, to just be able to readjust as well. So like the clear protocol is always like internal testing. They see the patch um, before live does, and we always get feedback on it. And then it goes through and it gets tested properly. That way it's like live isn't like an environment where people can expect anything but like what we actually want, right? If we feel like something's not good enough, we will just take it away Okay. in that sense. So yeah, it's always on paper, into the game, into the game, into testing take it back, put it in testing again, goes live. That's usually how it goes. And so I assume like for people that are actually only like playing the live game or something like they kind of feel it's uh, like very strong and they feel like they don't like maybe sometime not being heard is also like there's this whole process that go uh, behind the scene in a sense for all the people that are not in the internal testing. And so those change will take a little bit of time to uh, reach the, the, the live server. Uh, I would say like, since you, like, we do like, I think um, it's like uh, every two weeks, like there is like a patch, uh, one like uh, every two, like once it's like a very like important balance patch and another one is like usual, like usually content patch, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but, uh, and so like kind of like this time frame, like I guess you have like a, probably like every two weeks, you try to see like what will be like the, the next things. And so I assume like you're already like kind of, I feel like it can be like very, very, very hard. Like when you work on balance, the fact that you just like send live, like the patch note, like next Tuesday, I think it's going live on the game. And then you kind of have like to extract like the information and probably see what you are going to go next. Is it something that you just like wait to have like some results from the live servers so you already know what you want to do afterwards? Like uh, now you're already working on the next patch in a sense on balance. So we usually come in with some assumptions, for instance, like when we, whenever we make a change goes like, oh yeah, the, the, this character is going to be pretty strong or like this character is probably going to be pretty strong. So you're already in the back of your mind, like formulating an opinion. And then you're just, again, waiting for it to be validated whenever it goes live. And after it goes live, that's when that's all the validation you need to be able to just push things in the right direction where it's like, there'll always be outliers, especially when you do massive changes in that sense. So it's like, yes, it's like, uh, th there's like a lot of work that goes into uh that really goes into formulating these patches obviously mostly because like i'll give context as to, the, as to these two patches that we've had recently and uh shout out to blood mortius for this because he basically did most of it like by himself for the most part and ray as well you know it's those guys are machines but essentially um it, it takes like this one in particular when you have like such big changes for instance taking out like global xp taking out uh, a bunch of different things from the game um, it, it can take a really long time to even put down on paper, especially when you have other things where it's not like we only do balance, right? It's like, yeah. you know, people have features, people have upcoming heroes that they have to work on, people have uh, UI, like they, they have like other things that they have to support, like game design is like quite broad. It's not as if like we only sit here and do balance like eight hours a day, five days a week, right? So it's like to be able to allocate that time, like it, it took about a month of planning or a month of like just planning and working in order to actually get it done mostly because of all the other stuff. It's not as if we're working 40 hours a week for that whole month on balance. So, yeah, I mean, it, it is a lot of work, right? And especially like it, it's work that never ends as well is the yeah. thing that people also don't acknowledge. And it's also very, very hard because again, it's like the, the one thing that is nice is that we do patch every two weeks. So it's like if something ever goes awry, we could be a little bit more loose, right? Like we could just go like, hey, I wonder what happens and just throw it in there. We, we don't really throw things in willy nilly. Like I don't want people to think that, but it's like, at the end of the day, we can, it's really access. If there's any time to do it, it is now. Right. And it's like, so yeah, it's just, it's a lot of work. Balance is a lot of work. Yeah. Like you said, a lot of never ending work. Uh, and I kind of like, like what you like, uh, into the ad here, like it's that it's early access. So it, like, it's the best time to actually like try out like those, like more, 
um, game changing uh, stuff, like you said, like here, like you, you change like a, a little bit like around the TTK. We also change like how objective and structure kind of work about like this global experience. And those change actually, like, like you said, have huge impact on how the game feel overall. Like it's not just like you're changing one hero, it's just changing the whole dynamic of the game. And um, in that sense, I think that it's probably like here right now in early access that it's better to do them because like once it's kind of on the live game, I guess that's the type of change that we don't accept, uh, expect, except like maybe like for the future when the game is actually like working well and we have like big season change. And so in that regard, like I remember like someone like asked a question uh, on my Discord was about like, what is like your, your, um, your idea of like, using like the map in itself as a variable for change like do, do you consider like at any point like sometime that changing the map could be like a solution to improve like the enjoyment of the game or like this is set in stone because like changing the map is also like a humongous amount of work because there is like all the, the art team to go after that well the map's definitely a variable right it's a variable that we consider in regards to whenever we think about ttk in particular in team fights it's like a lot of these fights happen Right? How do fights feel to play? It's like the map is a very big variable in regards to that, right? Yeah. How are pits? How are all these other things, right? They, these are all very big variables that we all acknowledge. Um, in regards to can they be changed? Of course, they can be changed. I would say, like, if there's anything in particular that people should take away from this, is really just like if you want change, please just say it and say it and say it and say it and say it. <laughs> just don't stop saying it. Like, I, I don't know, I don't know how else to tell you, right? It's like, yeah. it's not as if like there aren't people who it's like when people, when something gets said once, like within internally, people go like, oh yeah, I agree with that. And then they share it. Right. But it's like when you see it again and again and again and again, and then it's just in front of people's faces all the time, like people can't really ignore it. And it's not as if people do ignore it. It's just that we're, we're spinning a lot of plates. Like everybody in the company is spinning a lot of plates. Everybody in the company is preparing for so much for you guys. So it's just. Sometimes we just get lost in what we actually can do in this sense. But yes, to answer the question, it's like the map is definitely a variable and a variable that I think that we should change in some capacity. And uh, like now that you, you said that, like uh, in, in which direction, like you're not forced to answer, but like now that you kind of said so here, like what you think like in terms of variable, like it's maybe like make it bigger or like the jungle, like a little bit different, like a little direction here. Yeah, so I just want to preface by saying that like we can go into this conversation, but I'm not promising anything. But um, yeah, in, in in this sense, but uh, I mean, realistically, right? It's like uh, the biggest thing would be honestly just widening it out. In, in my in my opinion, like widening it out is probably the biggest thing. I think in in particular, like the jungle just has a lot of really a lot of tight edges, a lot of walls, and that's also by design because we took a lot of inspiration from Monolith and the assets, etc. But it really is one of those where it's like if we could just have a little bit more open space that people can play in and like natural pockets that people can fight in a bit more, I think that alone would be a lifesaver. Like I feel like that's one of the things that personally bothers me uh, a decent amount in regards to whenever we make changes, it's like this cloud looming over my head. It's like, not this thing. So yeah, I, I think there's stuff that we could do and there's stuff that we could definitely push towards, but like you said, it is a really tall task. And I just want everyone to acknowledge that where it's like, I think if there's anything that takes time, yeah. it, it is the map, it is the level. Cause the sanctity at the level is by far the most important thing where it's like, we spent a lot of time like polishing up this map, even though yes, there people will find nooks and crannies that you can just potentially fall through the floor or whatever else. Right. Yeah. It's like, but the sanctity of the level is hundred percent. It's like the highest priority, right. That people can actually play the game. So. It definitely is not an easy task by any means, but it is definitely one that is shared about internally, thought about, and deeply considered and deeply wanted. Nice. And also, like, if we can add a little bit on that, is like I assume that if any change get made in the future, I kind of want to be sure that you do won't have to redo and redo and redo that job again, because like we said, like changing the map is actually like a very humongous task. So I would assume, like, you, you talk about like the TDK that it could took like around like a month of planning, like changing the map is like also like we want to be sure that the change is actually like great and works perfectly before it's actually like reach your life server. So we, we don't have to change it like again and again. So I would assume like we, like you said, like you were talk, 
it's it's not about internally but as players we have also to understand that those change is not like just changing a number on like a, on, on the on the data inside the game it's like much more complex than that so we also have to be a little bit patient around those things um i have also like since you said like you're, you're starting to introduce a little bit like all this um data driven information which i think it's uh like one of the things like i, ca- I kind of like uh the approach well i i, I have to say like i'm uh, i'm a fan of the approach in general because like you kind of get like you scaling with like the player base in a sense of so not you know that you have like a lot more players that are playing so you've kind of find out that the data can be useful so we're trying to implement that and uh, in that regard, like I assume, like this type of data will get like um, more important, I think later on the road when we have a better, like we have more player base, like a bigger player base, which means that the data you're collecting from matches is actually like more relevant in terms of like what is strong and what is weak, because currently, like since we have like a smaller player base, like we say like there is like very big disparity team of player level, and that can impact the quality of the information you collect. Yeah, it's always it's always a mark whether it be um, how competitive matches are, especially in the pub com- in a pub environment, whether that be through matchmaking or just player skill disparity, whatever else, right? It always does. It, it never taints the sample because it's the real world and it's what we balance the game around. And that's the other thing, right? Is at the end of the day, there are caveats that we do have to accept because like our uh, the the ocean is so wide in the sense where like the 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 floor and the and the ceiling is is so wide in our game. In that sense, where like the worst player and the best player um, could actually exist almost in a game, right? In this sense, so it's like yes, it does. You, you could say like it, it taints it taints the data, but like I said, it's the real world. It doesn't taint the data. It's really just like you have to look at it through that lens. And so we have like a, a question in the chat from uh, Elder Rain that is like kind of asking like how you uh, blood and Ray like you kind of actually managed to keep up with all this amount of data because he finds himself like trying to keep track of like the data of every heroes and item is kind of overwhelming. So I assume like the long time you spend on working on that kind of help, but uh, like, uh, do you have like your secret uh, strategy to be able to like remember everything or like a very, very neat uh, like document that cover everything? Um, there are like a few like master documents in this sense that uh, to, to be honest, like Blood Marty's does most of this stuff in regards to maintaining these things or you know obviously he started working on the game before ray and i came uh so he's mostly like the guru when it comes to it but a lot of it is um you really just have to look at look at a stat and understand what it means right for instance like you know uh armor per level it's like what, what when is this relevant it's it's relevant mid to late game right it's like you look at stats and you look at them in like portions of the game and when they influence and then you just adjust them according to your goal in that sense and again it's like once you understand the relevance of like what does it mean when like thing mouse six armor per level which he doesn't have six armor per level but you get the point right yeah. it's like well, what what does that actually mean well that means at level 18 he has 132 and our 132 is x percent uh, physical mitigation right yeah. and how does that play right how does it play when he's that durable right and how much effective health is that right it's like it's numbers into numbers into numbers but i would say part of it is um over time because realistically all of us have played mobas for over a decade Right, like for me in particular, I played for like almost 15 years now. Um, it's like you kind of, and would most of them use the same armor system, like the same, yeah. the like you know they use the same way in regard because it's all it all comes from Warcraft three, in regards to how they do armor and how they do like physical damage, etc., AD, etc. So it's like it's all just it's all just math where like you can look at a you can look at an armor value at a certain point in the game and go like that's too much, that's too little, or you can understand the context of it. So I'd say like a lot of it comes over time, but it's also just compartmentalizing the stats into what period of the game do they affect, and what does it mean, and then what is it what is it in relation to other other characters, right? Specifically within their own archetype. For instance, like we never compare Grux to Murdoch, right? Why? Because they're two completely different characters. Yeah. Murdoch's always going to have lower health. Why? Because he has safety of range. They, they, these things make sense, right? It's like, uh, but Grux is also going to have a higher damage, right? Baseline. Why is he gonna have higher physical damage baseline? It's because again, it's like the, in terms of the the range and melee caveats in regards to like yeah. fighting each other. It's always like, what does range have? Range has poke. Range is range advantage. It's all about playing short trades, the long game, etc. 
what does melee have? Melee is always about just all leaning your opponent. It's what's sitting on top of your head, and it's about effective uptime. Where it's like you have less uptime than the range characters, so therefore you have to pack a bigger punch, you have to be more durable to close the gap, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Definitely. And here, like, it's kind of so like what makes fun, a MOBA fun is like this different interaction that you have to understand that when you're like connecting with your melee character onto the range, you're going to be like having a better match. But if you stay at distance that you manage to keep like the gap, so that kind of like transform like this data into actionable stuff on the field, which makes actually like the game fun. And each character and each role kind of have their strengths and weaknesses, which kind of make like all these things like a, a very, very like... Um, interesting game to play because uh if something is just overpowered like you range and you have like the most damage and you are the most tanky like then it's 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 imbalanced and at the same time it's absolutely not fun because there is nothing that you can do on that regard like there was also like a question uh that was asked about like um was like around the competitive night uh which was like did you use like competitive night to like try to extrapolate like a little bit more of data or it was like mainly a pure mode for people to actually enjoy and uh, here we're going a little bit like outside the mark but the competitive mode got disabled and in the sense like uh, what was the goal and if it wasn't reached like for which reason yeah, so competitive nights is a tricky one right where um realistically it really was just us trying our crack at uh just trying to give a certain section of the players, namely just the competitive ones, just a, a good time, right? And just give them fun because at the end of the day, it's like, uh, I think everybody acknowledges that we're quite a ways away from ranked, right? Which is the ultimate goal of like, what exactly com uh, competitive players want, right? In regards to like the retention loop and like the things, like the, the thing that keeps them ticking. They want to see the numbers come up on the screen, say plus 14 LP or plus four, 14, like whatever it is in Smite, I forget what it is. is that, it's. I think it is LP as well. I don't remember. I don't remember but the either. point is they, they, they're looking for that root, loot, uh, loop, right? They're looking for the carrot in that sense. And it was just us trying to provide a carrot with a way that doesn't disrupt our workflow. It can allow us to work on other things autonomously and just something that was cheap and really easy to make. And obviously there's, there's opinions that get shared internally. It's like, is this really what people want? Like, is this, could we do it better and all this stuff? But for the goals that it had, which was to be as cheap as possible to be able to give people something, it's like we did deliver on that. Ultimately, it's like it, it's like it, it didn't actually turn out to be a feature that we we're, were going to keep long term. It was never a feature that we wanted to keep long term in this in this sense. Uh, it was really just anything to buy the time, right? And at the end of the day, it's not it's not lost work. It's all work that we're going to use into other features and other things. So. It was really just us trying something is probably the best way to describe like what competitive nights was and yeah it is what it is you know it's it's one of those where you know how i mentioned earlier about uh we will do balanced stuff and we come in with preconceived notions right it's like there's also preconceived notions about competitive nights right it's like is it gonna is it gonna do well is it gonna drive retention is it going to you know bring in people is it going to promote a lot of like fun gameplay or whatever else. And it's like, there's always like, you know, there's always opinions on both sides. Yeah, I, I kind of like that most of the time, like when you talk about that, it's always like with the mindset of are the player are going to love the game and like are going to enjoy to play the game. And I think it's uh, actually like very important because when you're like the head inside the game all the time, you can sometimes like forget to see like the perspective, the game from the perspective of the player. Like I said, you have preconceived notion, but you also like take this time to try stuff and get like some feedback out of that. So, and uh, you don't like, I don't feel at least like from like, uh, like the, the feeling I got from like a spectator from the exterior that you just get stuck on something that we thought it was right. In the end, it doesn't like feel like perfect, like as it should be, but we keep thinking like it's actually like the right way to do it. So I really, I really commend this, uh, this approach. And I think that uh, once again, like I said, I, I'm a fan of the approach. So um that's uh interesting there was also like another question that i feel like was kind of quite interesting it's like not for now i completely like agree that but it's something that um one player was talking about the fact that the best way like probably to get like a good sense of like good data for balance and feedback is kind of like to try to help the whole player base to be uh, a little bit better at playing the game because sometimes like you have a character like we said that they don't like are playing correctly or they don't understand their role and so that can quickly like, become outliers like 
if they still have fun, like I think it's fine. But he was like asking, like, do you plan like maybe to help in the future, like some features to help people to share that knowledge, like maybe guiding games. He was referring about Dota 2 uh, in that regard. I know that you're already like talking about tutorials uh, that are already like implemented in the game. So I guess it's kind of like in this line of like providing ways for the players to actually like, get better at the game. So overall, like the whole um, like balance and understanding of the game is actually like easier to to maintain and to and to realize sorry i was replying to something um <clears throat> so in regards to like uh, expanding on the onboarding in particular because this is really what this falls under in my opinion yeah. is just onboarding um a lot of this, uh, a lot of stuff in regards to like making people better is really just trickle down effect in my mind, where it's like, as the player base gets bigger and the game becomes more competitive, people will start being better and it will happen slowly over time. And speeding along that process is always helpful, creating communities and all that stuff or creating spaces where people can learn and play is really important, but a lot of it is going to be player driven. Um, in regards to Dota as a reference in particular, that is a whole host of work. I'll be completely honest. Like Dota is, I would almost say like, I've never said that a game is too fleshed out in any department, but I would say Dota's like tutorial and onboarding systems are too fleshed out. They're so fleshed out that I don't even want to look at them. It's really like, because I've tried to play Dota like several times, right? And every single time I've always just stopped because it's just like coming from league and having league bias, like turn speeds just absolutely irritate me. I'm sorry. Like just playing with it, it just feels like the most clunky thing in the world. And I understand like it's, it's, it, that's just what it is. But yeah, I would definitely say like there is a line of too much. And I would, I would honestly say personally, and this is, this is not to reflect anybody but myself is like that Dota does have too much. It's probably the only game that has too much, but it's because the game is that complex that you need those tools to be able to onboard in that way. But in order to like, let's say like we could. There's multiple things that we could do in regards to expanding the watch tab or expanding like anything else in regards to giving more informative content or even highlighting community content, etc. These are all things that we could do, um, but it's like I've got no real thoughts other than that yeah. in that sense. I think I think it's entirely trickle down effect. I think people will get better whenever they want to get better and whenever the ecosystem drives them to get better. I think things like ranked will make people want to get better and therefore they will get better. I think things like tournaments or made of sponsored events will make people want to get better for the prospect of the pro dream or going to land, whatever it is. Right. Yeah. And also I think these are the things that will drive it. I also feel like that in, in a sense, you're also like still like pretty on upfront about like also offering tools for people to get better. Like for instance, like the replay mode is super important because people can go back, watch their game, analyze them. We have the whole part of the public API, which help people to actually like extract information about their own game. And so they can still like connect with the game outside. And so like, also like you said, it's community driven, but you're also like providing tools for the community to actually be able to, uh, to, to make this type of content and, and helping everyone growing as the community, uh, which is um, great. So like I, I kind of like reaching like the end about like my question around balance and also like the the people that were um, asking and so like here uh, I just like have uh, like maybe like some a few like out of question out of context question like uh, the first one is like will we see a little bit more of Omega Police Department in the future or not? <laughs> Probably not. Okay. It's uh, no, no, we will have to fill the void because the, the EU team are a bit lacking right now. Uh, so and we lost like another like amazing team in the sense of Omega Police Department. But I'm pretty sure like we uh, will have a lot of great players joining soon. Yeah, um, yeah, probably not. <laughs> it's a it, it's the answer. Also, like uh, like any memorable moment to share so far on your on the Omega's journey, like since you joined the company, like something that uh, like uh, like maybe like release of the early access or something like you feel free to share. Um, I mean, there's a lot of memorable moments, right? I would say for me, it's like I'm not as uh, how do I describe it? it it's still it's still kind of weird being in this position, if that makes sense. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, it's been a lot of fun. I think that there's a lot of like cool things that have happened, uh, cool things that I've been able to work on and really cool moments, right? For instance, um, I remember like that very first, I forget exactly which one it was. I think it was uh, PCC or something like this uh, before they 
Oh my gosh. It was the tournament when it was like a uh, immune and professors in the final, like the, one of yeah. the very first NA tournaments. Like uh, I remember watching that um, with, with some people internally in the company and it was just like a really good time. And that was a, a pretty memorable moment in that sense where it's just like kind of going like, wow, like, you know, things really do come full circle in this sense where it's like, we're actually building a game that, you know, I've always wanted and things like that. So th th there are a lot of memorable moments. It's hard for me to like give it to, one in particular, whether it's releasing early access, that first tournament that I watched, or even just uh, my time playing was really, was really fun as well. Um, it's just a lot of really memorable and cool stuff that has happened over these past couple of years. Very nice to hear. Um, I know, like I, I get like forced to ask this question, otherwise, like I'm probably gonna have like a bad time. So, like, is Empty your favorite tester? No. Okay. And I like Not this answer. All. Like sometimes it needs to be put in his place. So I really like that that that, that answer here. Um, <laughs> and Empt is dying in the chat. Like that, that that's what you get. Like if you don't ask the question, there is no risk for you to actually be hurt if you don't know the answer. Now you know. It's a bit unfortunate for you. So I also like take the chance. Like if anyone in the chat have like some uh, additional question they want to ask, like import. It's the time. Uh, like we've seen, like import is, is pretty open uh, in answering all the stuff. So if you have like question about the balance, uh, about like maybe like other stuff that import can be connected with, uh, we know that you already like answered a question about the control that he can't really answer because it's not his topic. But uh, yeah, um, and uh, just like wait, like maybe like uh, one or two minutes if someone has something to say. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I would like to uh, uh, thank you a lot, uh, Import, for uh, coming. And here we have like the question, where do you see Pred in about five years? Any chance we have competitive team in eSports? Um, yes. I mean, at the end of the day, it's really just like the ultimate goal of any MOBA, right? I think we've always seen that it's like whether you, if you follow the history of MOBAs, that essentially if a MOBA isn't competitive, right, it's like it really doesn't exist in the sense where like it really only exists to be competitive. And like there are like outliers in the sense, things like Unite or whatever else, but they're trying to feel the, com their goals are completely different, right? I think like our goals are very clear in regards to that is the end goal. Um, in five years, yeah, like it, it'll, ha it'll happen in five years. Uh, I think that's a very fair assessment to think that there would be esports in Pred in five years. Yeah, and this the thing is like uh, it's the goal, and we have to all believe overall as a as a community that it is going to happen and try to make it happen. Where you are the first front, like actually like uh, making this uh, dream a reality in a sense. So I hope I will definitely be there like in five years and see like this vision like becoming like a reality. Um, so. Brett Paragon, we already like kind of answered this question. Like Import said that he was like internally they were like considering that the map could be changed is definitely like something that is out of the question. Uh, but that's something that if uh, it happened, takes a lot of time and need to be really well sought out, but it's not like out of the question. Uh, and if like, it, when I answer this, this question that already be said, like if I say something wrong, like import, feel free to correct me uh, in that regard. Yeah, no, um, to just to reiterate, since he wasn't here, it's basically just, there's a lot of, moving parts in regards to this and changing the map isn't a small task by any means. So again, it's like, if you're one of the, one of the people who think that the map's a problem, like I can say nothing else other than please just raise it. Add us on Twitter, like post in Reddit, like uh, post in our discord, just reach out and just don't stop reaching out and don't feel like you're not getting acknowledged because there's plenty of things that do not get replied to because some people or don't really want to expose themselves in that sense internally <laughs> like it uh, it just like re reply to stuff uh but there's plenty of people who do just share around like your guys posts on reddit or on discord or whatever else so just just keep on posting it like i would just say like if you want anything just keep on posting it that's really it i think that's uh that's a very good message for uh, for for kind of the end of this uh podcasting and like uh, we're the player like from what I extracted from this whole interview like uh, uh, the goal is really to make a game that we all enjoy playing and like this fun factor and enjoying playing the game is actually like something that is very important for Omeda and so if something like you actually don't like you're not having fun like just say it a lot of the time like repeatedly because like, like you said like uh, it will get there but uh, only through repetition at some point it will finally like 
transform into actionable something. Um, and so apparently like uh, we have like one more question from Kenna. How are you feeling about party MMR being boosted a lot? Are you going to change this or keep it that way? Uh, matchmaking is like a whole nother rabbit hole. Um, we, we could actually go into this if you really want to. Um, we're currently like we have just technical limitations is probably the best way to describe it in regards to why we can't really improve the experience, but there is a lot of work that's being done. It's just hard to really see it come until it's done. It's like we're essentially switching out systems and uh, we could sit here and talk about matchmaking and Canada's a little bit more informed than than others in regards to it, along with some of our testers, just because, you know, it's easier to share information in that sense. But just know improvements are coming and it's like, I think everybody can agree that it's like the experience could just be better and it will be better, right? It's like eventually we want to have ranked and it's like, you know, at the end of the day, it's we, we need the most competitive games in order to be able to host a ranked playlist is really all it is. And in the end, I think we kind of have to remember that we're in, in early access. It's not really an excuses in a sense, but it's just that what we want, like for the game to succeed, I guess is like that for the free to play release, like all of that is like fleshed out. And so we're kind of helping in a sense, like, uh, Omega getting there with uh, our, our feedback and keeping playing the game and actually like, enjoying it and preparing the scene for when it got released, I guess. Yeah, I would just say in particular with matchmaking is like matchmaking is quite similar to the map in regards to it's like a lot of big systematic changes, right? For instance, uh, kind of like the way that we match players currently is getting fundamentally changed um, at some point, right? You know, there, there's no ETA on that. So... The point is, is like whenever it gets changed, it's like it will, it should at the very least from from our simulations that we've done and stuff like that, that it's like it, it should improve the experience. But it's hard to do much more with like the current framework that we have currently, just again, due to technical limitations, which doesn't mean that we can't, but it's just the deep rabbit hole is really all it is. That's probably like the best way I can answer that question. No, so like I guess it also comes down to the fact that uh, there is a lot of prioritization. Also, like you, you, you know, like the issues. Like you want to get like the best experience possible, but at the same time you have to confront yourself to the reality of the the work. And there is like, uh, like, like for instance, like the last message that we receive about like the UI. We want like keep working on it because we want to get faster to the new UI that will help will help us to actually like uh, work better. Like from uh, Omeda's like uh, last announcement and. Uh, in a sense, like sometimes you have to make like some, um, how do you say that, like compromise uh, in a sense to try to reach like this vision, like uh, the better you can and the faster you can, but we can't do everything in one week. That's something that is not realistic, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing in regards to the new UI. Um, realistically, it was just that we were creating features because they're things that we knew, we knew that the community wanted and stuff that we wanted to implement to the game. And we knew ways that we could implement them into the game fast and quick and et cetera. Um, but it's like realistically at the, at, at a certain point, it really comes down to it where it's like we were doing, we were creating too much work for ourselves with the new UI where it's like, we were having to do two different things. Uh, every single time we created a new feature and we were just like, it's too much work on our UI team. It's too much pressure on other people. It really just wasn't sustainable is really what it was. And we just decided to rip off the bandaid and just get it done with. Right. And just reassert our priorities. And it's like, whenever we do do something like that, we always want to let you guys know exactly what's going on. And I know at times, like, you know, it could probably feel like we aren't being the most clear, but it's like, there's always like reasons in that sense why it may feel that way. But I feel like we were pretty clear on this one. Yeah, I really like the transparency overall uh, of of all the change and and you like you said you, you're not like overall like from what I, I've seen like uh, Omeda is not really scared of just like saying what is happening even if you know that uh, some people won't be happy but like you said like uh, it's the same thing as balance like you can't make like absolutely like everyone happy and sometimes you just have to just do what uh, is best uh, to, uh, to to move forward um, yeah. Uh, I think like that's uh, a good uh, moment to just uh, end up that talk. So I would like to thank you a lot, Imports, for uh, like coming to uh, to this talk and uh, taking the time to exchange with me and also like with the community and also like the whole openness uh, that just like uh, transparent and you answer like every single question we had. So thanks a lot for that. Thank you for coming and uh, I had a great time with you. Yeah, no, it was fun. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, 
you guys know where to reach me. I know most of you people in chat, like you either test or you guys are people who have been around a lot. It's like, you know, where, you know where to reach me, you know where to reach most of our people in that sense. Like if there's something in particular and we always, you know, we, we just want to make the best game that we can. That's it. Oh, people are asking for a leak in the chat. Uh, I don't know, like if it's really like the place for that, maybe like a little thing, but uh, no. A leak. Uh, I can prepare a leak. One sec. I'll prepare a leak just for you guys. Like, luckily, I have my chat to remember like these type of important things because, like, uh, most of the time, I'm a little bit like too, uh, to, to, to not really like force this type of 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 action. <clears throat> Your leak is console comes out sometimes this year. There you go. It's a leak you already knew. I don't have anything. It's fine. Like I say, yeah. like people uh, will uh, still enjoy the thing. And uh, now we get to like uh, people are waiting for console like crazy, I guess. But yeah, console this year. So on that good note, like thank you once again, everyone for the chat. Thank you like for participating and changing. Uh, oh, blood can leak something apparently in the chat. So. We'll see if uh, if he actually has something before we actually close the stream. Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't. You can close it. Okay. He's just okay. playing with you. All right. All right. <laughs> like I love stabbing. Like don't do that with, with me because like I'm a very very like uh, first like uh, like how do you say like like not really like reading into second degree and I just take like everything for granted. Like I'm a very naive type of guy. So you got me there, mm. uh, and you will go always got me. So. Thanks a lot, uh, everyone, and have all a, a wonderful evening, a wonderful weekend. And uh, yeah, I hope you had a good time and uh, see you next time. Later, dudes.